You made it to another episode of the We Did That Shit podcast, hosted by Maya and Babi. Join them as they share experiences and opinions about who did some shit, what they learned from shit, and how they got through some shit. Cousins by chance, friends by choice. These two passion-driven personalities create addictive conversation. Are we ready? Yes. Maya? Okay. I'm here. In five. Okay. In five, four, three, two. Hey, Maya. Hey, girl. What's up? Life is up. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Life is up. I feel like I got to wrestle you down now. Like, uh, listen, let me just make an announcement before we even get started. This summer, you know? I was thinking the other day, like, you really took a break to come back to make an announcement to say, hey, guys, we're probably going to be on another break. Not a long break, but a break nonetheless, um, because it's summer and we got things to do, places to be and people to see. Oh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> See, papacita. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, what's been going on? How was your week? Progressive. I'm getting things done. Um, I had a good week. Okay. Yeah, had nice conversation with an adult of the male species this week. Ah. Mm-hmm. Did That's you it. to tell me that? I'm just saying. I, you know, it's it's so funny to me <laughs> before you get into it. It's so funny to me that here lately, I feel like it's been secrets being kept or something. And when we get on to the show, then it's like, yeah, I did this or yeah, I did that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, now nah, normally I would know that. Mm. Now I don't know. Like I said, I feel like I got to wrestle you down <laughs> lately. <laughs> like, mm. oh. Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, one of those random things. You're in the same place at the same time and they staring, 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 but don't say anything. Um, you know, but when I got back out to big baby, uh, we were parked next to each other. So, you know, he started a conversation. Okay. And I was like, you know, it was a decent conversation. Seemed Mm -hmm. like a nice person and everything. Maybe I'll see him again in life. I don't know. Did you get his number? Did he get your number? Not get, did you get his number? Because, you know, I don't believe in that. Take my number down. Call me first. Right. I don't know. Right. And that would be a negative. He didn't ask and I didn't offer. Because I'm not offering. That these days and ages, what is going on with the people? Because you stared, you waited Two had the conversation, and you had the conversation, and then at the end of the conversation, you was just like, "Okay, right, bye." Have a nice day. Oh, okay, okay bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird, but I mean, yeah. I'm not a therapist. I'm, I'm not here to help. I just was like, you know, bye, bye. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> me and Big Baby left. So okay. we'll see. You know, maybe I'll see him again in life. Maybe it has maybe happened not. before. Maybe, maybe not. not. But if you do, I mean that's cool. And if you don't, then I mean it was like you said, it was a good conversation. Yes. And I think that um that was good for me because sometimes I'm very closed mm-hmm. and um I'm trying to practice not being so closed or even not even appearing closed. Now, mm-hmm. if something comes up during the exchange you know, that I don't like or whatever, then I can just stop it and be on my way. But I'm really trying to be more open. Good. Good for you. Thanks. Good for you. I'm 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 interested in where this will go. And what I mean by that is your openness. Right. Me too. Me too. I'm working on it. You know, Good. I'm working on it. I'm trying to be deliberate. So what's it's- up with you, busy? Hey, listen, this I'm out here. It's, I'm outside is open. Thousand dollars <laughs> every time you walk out your house. Yes. But I'm outside a little yes. bit. 
um i'm trying to think like i have been extremely busy and i don't even the sad thing about it is i can't even sit here and tell you blow for blow why i've been so damn busy i don't even know why i've been so busy it's just things happen but um hanging out you know a little bit hanging out we're gonna do a bachelorette weekend mm-hmm. um that should be fun one thing about my friends they plan things like things is planned to the t like you know two o'clock we doing this seven o'clock we doing this you ain't got to think about what you got to wear. It's like wear black jeans, white tee. Now that gets on my nerves. I, I was about to say. <laughs> no, I, don't like, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. You know what? I tweeted this the other day. Nothing gets on my nerves more than a white party. And nothing gets on my nerves more than somebody telling me what to wear. Yeah. Especially it's like, if it's white. I just, I don't know what it is and what it is with us with the obsession of all white parties. Like, I think that seeing a sea of black people in white is wonderful. But like, white, I just feel like it's so hard. It's just hard. It's like, you you know, we thick. We got lumps and bumps and you know what I'm saying? Butts and guts and, and, and white don't always look good on all of that. It's not flattering. Just saying. Like, well, you have to know how to dress your body and wear the right undergarments, but you just don't like people telling you what to wear, period. And then like white is on the whole other end of the spectrum of your favorite color. So yeah, that really because I, I'm it. always like, man, y'all couldn't just have like an all black party. What, I mean, why don't you want to have a black party? I think black is very flattering on people. It looks good. You know, it's, it's like... It's it's mysterious. It's you know it's classic. Mm-hmm. It's, yes. it's like black. You know, <laughs> I just love it. So I I don't know, but um yeah. So doing a bachelorette weekend that should be a good time. But I have I just been busy. I've been busy with work. I've been busy with just trying to get my life, keep my life in order. I have been um on a mission, back on a journey. Mm-hmm of trying to do just like a healthy living, you know, um, I've been getting up every day, walking and, you know, trying to be conscious about what I'm eating, you know, just really trying to get back on it. I have felt right. for so long and I'm just trying to get back on it. I'm trying to knock stuff off my to-do list. To-do list. I'm trying to get this procrastination spirit off of me. Um, just trying to, just trying to live life right so all of those things are keeping me busy yeah i feel like um i'm with you on the exercise i started walking again because er, like i vehemently loathe exercise i just i don't like anything about it I, i i just don't like exercise um i would love to be able to swim but i would need like my own private lap pool Mm-hmm. And since I don't have that, walking is something that I can do. Yeah. Because while I'm walking, you know, I can say my prayers. I don't listen to music or anything. I'm just alone with my thoughts and I like it. Oh, that's good. I have to listen to something for sure. I listen to, I catch up on all like the podcasts that I listen to. I catch up on those shows when I'm walking and it's just mm-hmm. like a, a a mindless thing to do. So that's what I like it. That's what I like about it. Cause when I'm exercising, I'm thinking like, all right, you got 10 more, just do the 10. Like it, it's, it's, it's not a stress reliever to me because I'm stressing myself out about trying right. to get through the exercising. It's just, I don't know. I'm going to get plastic surgery, but I mean, that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I don't already told the girl that I work out with it's now or never honey. Cause I think I'm going to buy a house, but I might take that money, that down payment money, and get all this sucked right on out and feel good about it. You, yeah, no. I got a roof over my head. I'm living, no. I'm living right now. I'm going to be all right. Just saying. Maya, you don't need surgery. And um, so what I've done now is I've set my goal and I try to achieve my goal first. So if my goal is to walk 10,000 steps, I walk 10,000 steps first and then I go on with my day. Um, And because it's not a rigorous workout, I'm not 
as tired as I, because I used to not be able to exercise in the morning, like at all. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you know, one hour exercise, eight hours of sleep, it was counterproductive. (laughs) So, um, I mean, literally, because I was like, I'm out, that's it. Uh, But now, you know, so I've been doing my 10,000 steps in the morning at the park, and then I just get on with my day. And it's been helpful. I think I lost a pound or two. Good. Um, I definitely feel it in my clothes, which to me, like that beats the scale anytime, Mm -hmm. you know, my high rise jeans aren't hip huggers anymore. They actually rising high, Mm -hmm. you know, so, um, and then, you know, I'm going away. That was an impromptu trip. And I mean, it's not like my summer body's not here, but I'm gonna take what I got over to Aruba. Aruba. And she talked about she trying to pin me down, and now she going to Aruba. First, she was going to the beach every day. It was hot. Now she going to Aruba. Ain't that something? I mean, you know, it just happened. <laughs> it must be nice when 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 a when Aruba can just happen. I think that that is wonderful. I, I wasn't invited. Not that I feel any type of way or anything, but I mean, um, I mean. Uh, you can certainly come. Uh, can I? Yes, you can. No, I'm dead ass. You- <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I'll come. If you want to come? Yes. Oh, well, come on. All right. Well, let me look into some flights and stuff. All right. Because I'll, I've been wanting to go back to Aruba. I love it. I wanted to go to Aruba instead of Puerto Rico. And y'all heard about how that went. Right. It'll be a girl's trip, but it's fun. It's a fun girl's trip. No, okay. Yes, it's going to be a fun girl's trip. Okay. So so what's going on? Who did some shit this week? Well, who did not do some shit this week? First of all, before you even get started, I just want to say I learned about two things going on in pop culture that seems to be like really, you know, trendy, big, whatever. And I did not learn them from you. And that's how I know you busy. Like, what is going on? You know, I, I know nothing going on in these streets. And then there's like two things going on. And I'm like, oh, why well, ain't said nothing about that? Because when we talk, it's kind of like brief. But what's what it right, what because you're so busy, like well, I mean, summer, summer, summer time. <laughs> Just saying. Wait, well, so tell me what's going on. So the first thing, and um because you know I'm I'm a DL Hughley fan. Um, you know, he has a son with autism. So I like, you know, I've kind of followed him. I don't really listen to the radio show all the time, but I follow his I follow him, whatever, like mm-hmm. when he has stuff to say. So I came across a video where he's talking about how Monique was saying something about his daughter, like mm-hmm. really um derog- like you know, you are ma- like something toward the fact that someone violated his daughter and as a man you let it happen something like that okay i don't have all the background but dl hughley was explaining that they were kids it wasn't a man Mm -hmm. you know they were kids experimenting or something like that and 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 the both parents dealt with their children Mm -hmm. or um you know whatever so that was that but it all stemmed from that i had to go back and see Mm -hmm. what was going on like who is monique beefing with now right and so apparently there was a show and monique thought she was supposed to be the headliner and dl hughley was the headliner he went last and then she went on a rant throughout Mm -hmm. her whole portion of the show Mm -hmm. about not being the headliner Mm mm-hmm so, and this is just me, and I was just like, this is these people. Like, not, not that I even care, but one, it was classless. Mm-hmm. It was classless. It wasn't funny. It was classless. Right. Two, I was for Monique. Like, stay in your ground, boo. I get it. You know right. what I mean? But now, I mean, come on. Like, when you... Beefing with this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So you got to look at yourself now. Yes. Like, sh- she's getting out of control. Monique, that's, what are you that's, doing? That's what I'll say. I, I, yes. think, 
I think that she's getting a little out of control. I, but I also think that it's a lot of different ways to go with this situation. One, it wasn't either one of them shouldn't have even been beefing because at the end of the day, this was the promoter problem, not a Monique and a DL problem. If somebody is booking you for a show, somebody comes and they says, hey, I want y'all to do a live podcast and they book us and then they book 12 Kyle as an example, you know, hey, Kyle, and then they you they book 12 Kyle and then they say, you know, they tell us, hey, y'all going to be the last one, y'all the headliner, mm -hmm. y'all the big deal here, it's all about y'all. And then they go and they tell him the same thing. Why now are we beefing at who's going to be the last person, the headliner or whatever? Right. You should have went to the source. The people right. who told you that you were going to be the headliner, not address like us addressing Kyle and saying, oh, well, he ain't shit and he this and he that. During the show. To do when it had nothing to do with them. Furthermore, if we went out to our show and said, he ain't this and he ain't that. And we spent the whole show doing that. We ain't had no show. And that's just what it boils down to. Exactly. You know, I don't agree with the comedian uh, Corey Holcomb on a lot of the things that he says. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know, and, and what, what it is about him is a lot of times the message that he says get lost gets lost in the messenger which a lot of times happens right right because he'll say he 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 talks so bad about women it's hard to just get on his side of anything right but he made a good point i was watching him on somebody else's show from on youtube and he made a good point he was like monique ain't had no jokes because if monique had jokes as a comedian or as a performer or wh whatever you are when you have a job to do and you do that job well you go out and you perform the job and you take the the calls or whatever it is after the fact even if she went out there and she mentioned something about it you mentioned something about it and it's you five minutes it. at best and then you move on to yes. your jokes. Yes. You don't spend the 45 minutes that you have on stage talking about D.L. Hughley. And then, exactly. of course, the people was laughing because it's two folds on that, too. Either they laughing at you because your ass is running across the stage like a mad woman and you're talking about how much trash that he was. Or they're laughing at you, I mean, at the situation because they're fans, you know, and in this day and age, you could really do anything. If somebody ride with you, you could you could jump off a bridge onto people and, and they die. And people will be like, not well, not my fave. Because that's just the world that we live in these days. I think that Monique makes logical sense in some ways. When she talked about you know, the contract that she has signed with Tyler Perry and Oprah and all of them and right. she built her contract and and then she didn't want to do the other stuff. She had every right to stand on that when she talked about the, the fact that they give mediocre white women um, Netflix specials and they pay right. them tens of millions of dollars and then they offer her $500,000. She has a right to stand on that. At the end of the day, she has done good works. You know, like she has yeah. done good works, but really you're in a business of not what you have done is what have you done for me lately? And what have you done lately? That's the merit that you can stand on. Unfortunately, you know, you can't really come in and say, well, I got an Oscar and I got this and I got that. Cause it's like, all right, you got that. But like, are you making people laugh today? Right. You put people in the seat because your name, but can you keep them in the seat? That's a different thing. We can lure people to the show because it's like, you know us, but like, you got to have something to say so that people will keep tuning in. It ain't just enough to know you. You know what I'm saying? And then, well, go ahead. Let me let you finish. Let me let you say something because I can go on and on and on. I see. Um, and and that was uh, the point. That was, and, and you, all of this, and I'm learning this on my own. <laughs> like, I had, I, you know what? I had every intention on saying something to you, but it was like we were trying to get our schedule together to even do the show. So it wasn't like we was like, you know, talking about stuff. I feel like... Um, it is good to stand up for yourself. Yeah, of course. And you know, I feel I will fight for right. 
It's, right. it's, like it's, last week, it's the principle. It's right. the principle. So I agree with those things. But this, I think, was tacky. It That's was hell. tacky and it was uncalled for. And D.L. Hughley said, you won that Oscar for the role of being exactly who you are. Yeah. I was like, woo. That was well, saying a lot because you know how the mother in Precious was. So that was saying a lot. And people have to be very careful. See, you have to be very, very careful with that nice, nasty shit because that nice, nasty is 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 very easy to see under that nasty way. You know what I'm saying? And so for Monique, what you did with exposing allegedly, you know, allegedly exposing Tyler Perry and exposing allegedly exposing Oprah and allegedly exposing Lee Daniels and allegedly uh, exposing Netflix. That was all well and good. But now you're getting to the point with D.L. Hughley. You made it very personal and yes. made it very personal, not just even in attacking his daughter or attacking his character. Him being a headliner and you being a headliner really had nothing to do with character because at the end of the day, it all stems from ego. And what does ego get you? Ego is much like, it's like pride, right? Yes. A lot of people are in, in the grave. Dave said it on our show. A lot of people are in the grave based off of pride. What Also, Monique... What do you want your legacy to be? Exactly. What, what exactly. is it that you want people to remember you from? You know, it's it it, it it's it. People were riding with you, especially black women. They're riding with you, like, oh yes, yeah, stand up for us. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that saying baby on the back of it don't make it right. So you saying because right. he ain't nothing but a two sh uh, shucking jiving ass da 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 baby. That don't make what you're saying right. And you the common denominator. Like you and that husband. Of there you. it is there. Because there that, it is right there. Me, that's what it has to do with. that. You got to be very careful who you invite into your life. And you also have to look at um, what opportunities have you missed uh, and what opportunities have you gained based off of this person that is in your life. Because I watched her, you know, because now I'm all in it, right? I watched her YouTube live with her husband about the situation. And okay. her husband had a lot, a lot. to he say. He always does. He, he always star, has a lot to really. say. Uh-huh. He want he really want to be the star. And, and let's be clear, he plays off of the fact that Monique is this very um and I, I don't want to use this in the wrong term because I don't think that this is a bad thing. I don't think that's being submissive uh, is a bad thing. But I think that being submissive to a person that's not leading you correct is bad. And at the end of the day, money don't make the leader, but she's the leader as right. far as in the whole grand scheme of things. Right. You're the leader as far as her making you feel like you are something and uplifting you and putting you up as her manager, you know, Yes, right. but let's be clear. You work for her, and he knows how to provoke her. He mm -hmm. knows how to push her buttons. He knows how to egg her on, right? And yeah. he knows how to keep things going with her, and mm -hmm. that's just what it seems mm -hmm. like. Um, that that is what it seems like he's doing with her. And even since she's been in relationship with this man, a lot of things. And I mean, I don't know her. She's not my cousin. However, I do feel her, from what we do see, she has changed a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. And people don't, people don't change like that. Mm -hmm. I believe, now I don't know her, but I believe that's who she is. Right. And like what D.L. Hugh, Hughley was saying, no, you won the Oscar for being yourself. That's why you're so good at it. Yeah. Nasty. <laughs> Very nasty. And the thing about it is, is this, you can look at the situation and you can, I can look at the situation if I looked at it from just like a not whatever, right? Just like take the veil. I could just look at it for what it is. You, I could see points made on both sides. I, I can, I can see points made on both sides. I don't, I, I follow DL 
as well. I'm a D.L. Hughley fan. I'm a Monique fan, too, as far as her acting and stuff like that is concerned. I've never been a fan of Monique. I don't think Monique is funny in a stand-up comedian right. way. I, I don't look at Monique for comedy in that sense. I look at Monique for her. I think that she is a wonderful actress, you know, and I, I like the Parkers. I mean, that was funny right. for what it was. You know what I'm saying? But, like, Candace Avon made that show. Uh, you know, Monique added to her. So that's just how I feel about that. So I never looked at her as like a, a stand-up comedian person, but I I, I like her works, like in her movies and stuff like that. I think D.L. Hughley is a, a good comedian, right? And I think, I don't agree with everything that D.L. says now that in the lane that he's in, but I agree with a lot of the things that he says. And and what I'll say about this is, is that he took the high road, much like uh, Chris Rock. Yeah, he, he could have came out there and trashed Monique because he came after the fact. Right. I don't even think D.L. wanted to get into a back and forth and this and that and the third. And Monique made it so that it's like, I mean, I got to get down in the gutter with you. You know what I'm saying? But even in getting down in the gutter with her, he didn't get gutter like he could have got. But exactly. she went all the way down to the damn basement. Yes. And then D.L. Hughley said something that was very, very, very important. D.L. Hughley was like, how do you attack my manhood with the man that you sleep with every night? I don't understand it. And when he said that, I was like, well, I'll be damned. I mean, makes sense to me. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like you said, we don't know Monique. But I think that Monique, if she wants to continue to have a career, and I think that if she wants to continue to uh, rally people around her, especially for her causes, like standing up for Black women or or um, uh, being a champion for us in some type of way in business and stuff like that. I think that she has to be very careful about the bridges that she's burning and she's burning a lot of them. She is burning and bridges, not just, not just in Hollywood, but also with fans. Yes. Because sometimes people have just had enough. People yes. don't want to constantly rehearse the negativity. Yeah. Or here you going on and keeping for what? For, 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 for All something. the time for everything, right. Like 45 minutes, though, of you talking about right. how he was an Uncle Tom and a, and a this and a that and blah, 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 blah. Now, when she said the stuff about Steve Harvey, I understood, you know, like I get I get that. But the deal, he ain't really <laughs> because we don't like Steve Harvey. Though. Well, no, because <laughs> I mean, it was it's true when she said no. When, when Steve Harvey was, when she was on Steve Harvey's show and Steve Harvey was like, this is the money game. And she right. was like, no, this is the integrity game. Right. I was like, Steve Harvey, you sound just like a, a damn uh, clown, like you always sound. I, and I remember I used to really like Steve Harvey, but I tell you, he just can't wait to clown it up. Can he? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> He can't. He can't wait to clown it up. Like, the money game. So you'll just do anything for money? Um. That's what it sounds like sometimes. That's what he sounds well, like. And he said, well, he says things that will make a person believe that. I don't believe that he actually will. I he does have a threshold. He does have a threshold. If you sit and tell, but he know, does say it a lot. I'm not gonna I'm saying not saying negating this. that. Let I'm me also negating. say this. The older that I the, the older that I get, the more I realize that. Is very unfortunate, but people ain't for the black woman, even black men. They just not for They're black. Not. Women. That's, that's you know, true. Because you wouldn't sit there and tell no man. Let's just be just just be real. You wouldn't sit there and tell D.L. Hughley. This ain't about that. This is about the money game. Because you preach to another man. It's about integrity. It's about being a man. It's about standing up for yourself, standing up for your family. But then for a woman, you going to say it's about the it's about the money game, not about integrity, ninja. If you don't sit your wide mouth ass down, I don't like him. I don't like him, but I don't want to get on to Steve Harvey because it's getting off of the subject. But even in situations like that, you could be on Monique's side. You you rally behind Monique. Then you turn around and you start doing this. It makes it very hard to like lift you up, sweetie. It does, my baby. Right. <laughs> 
Listen to what I'm saying, sugar. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it better. But I mean, I knew you would know, and I heard nothing from you. I mean, like I found out by myself, and I'm just like well, lost. Anyway, it was just gonna get around to it one way or the other. Yes, but you see how much you knew. Yes. Yes. I, I felt. I, some, I, I felt very. You know, I felt much about that situation, like I did that uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock situation. Like, why do y'all take the opportunity? Like, why is it that we take an opportunity to tear each other down? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I think you can hold people accountable for their crap, but if I got something to say to you, I ain't gonna cuss you out on the damn show. I'm gonna say it after the fact and say whatever it is that I need to say. Like. It just didn't make sense to me. You could have pulled him to the side. Like, you out there acting like a plum monkey fool. And then talking about his wife, talking about his uh, his damn dog, his daughter. His, you know, now how about D.L. Hughley would have came out there, or D.L. Hughley's wife would have came out there and smacked the shit out of you. Exactly. Didn't you? Exactly. And I've never been, I don't like, and this is, I don't care who it is, people in my life, like there are people that I can't be around because I do not like people who put other people down. I don't like that. Right. I don't do not do that around me because I will. I don't even have to like the person too much to jump to their defense. I right. don't like that. It doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you bigger. It doesn't make you more honorable in my eyes. It makes you look like trash. Right. In my eyes, you are trash. And if I label you trash, you yeah, are right. trash for life. That, what I say, trash tr uh, trash can juice. And you know, if you trash can juice, yes. you're yeah, trash. Yeah, the liquid the at the bottom of the dumpster. I can't. I, I just, I do not like that. Trash. Yeah. She made herself look, she made herself look very foolish. And to even keep it going as far as it has went, you're making yourself look more and more foolish. And, and, and ladies... If you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, don't let no man take you uh, down so far because I ain't going to blame it all on her husband because she's a grown up. She has, you know, she makes the decisions that she makes for herself. But as you stated, things have changed since the man came into her life. And, you know, ladies, don't let no man take you so far down where especially no man that doesn't have as much anything. as you have or anything and then you build them up and then they're just taking every opportunity to to make you look like a fool but to lift themselves up because mm -mm. because that's what he's doing i'm in charge i'm the manager i'm the this that you see what mary j blige is going through what she was going through with her ex-husband I was going yet, to say, they still going through stuff? I know, no, but what I'm saying is all the stuff that she went through. He didn't yes. have nothing. He wasn't, I ain't going to say nobody is nothing, but you know what I'm saying. And then she, it took, in, in, a, in an effort to make him feel more, she put him in the position to be more. And then he and now she that, has to fund it. Yeah, he took that and, 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 and made her less and spending all her damn money on somebody else. And now she has to fund his life. Right. Just continue to fund his life. We yes. have to be very mindful of who we let into our lives. And the, the um, I don't want to say nobody is lower than anybody else, but the levels of life in the, of that we're on. We have to be very careful. I know all about that. <laughs> yes. Well, I almost don't want to mention the second thing. Well, what was the second thing? Because I probably know about that, too. I know you know about it. Oh, well, what's the second and thing? And hasn't said a thing to me. <laughs> I've been pissed. And I'm just, you know, walking around like I'm not connected to what's going on. I've been busy. You know? well, what's the second thing? Because maybe I don't know what's going on. So Michael B. Jordan proposed. And Lori Harvey said no. I mean, sips your tea. I just, man. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. I didn't know, though. You did tell me something different that I didn't know because I thought that they just broke up. I didn't know until 
I didn't know that he proposed. No, I didn't. I didn't know that he proposed to her. I thought that they just broke up. And then when I was hearing that he proposed to her and she said no, I thought it was just like a, you know how people talk on Twitter. It's just like people throw all kinds of scenarios out. Like he probably proposed and she said no. I didn't know that that was really true. Right. He wanted to get married and she did it. Now, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole on this one. Okay. Because to me, that's very surface. First of all, I'm just not one of those people who look at other people and say, you know, relationship goals and right. all those kind of things. You because you your relation, exactly, your relationship is your relationship, and you don't know what's going on in the relationship, and you also don't know what it took to get there. Even mm -hmm. if things are great, you know, you don't know what it took to get there. So I don't, you know, fantasize about other people's relationship. Right. Aesthetically, I think they make a very cute couple. Mm -hmm. Michael B. Jordan, from what I know, and you know, from even other people who know him, because he's from like North Jersey area, mm -hmm. like originally, mm -hmm. he's a very nice person. Right. A nice person. They say he was a nice boy. You know, he's a very nice person, he's raised from a good right family. Come, right, raised right, comes from a good family, all of those type of things. And I don't know Lori Harvey or her mother, who is the goat. Um, you know, she's the I, goat, but she's also teaching. Um, in the she, baby goat, <laughs> she's the goat. In in a lot of, if you could look at her as the goat in a lot of ways, but she's also teaching those ways. Well, my thing not was a bad thing. Just saying. No, I'm I'm not saying anything is good or bad. I'm just saying that. A, there's a lot of talk about it. Mm -hmm. B, a lot, ain't it? A, like, lot, a lot, a <laughs> lot. Um, B, I just, you know, people who have like derogatory things to say about Lori Harvey, um, and they say, you know, you can't make a hoe a housewife and all these Why other kinds. Of, that's I mean, it's out there. That's, that's you know, people say all kinds because of things. People know the people that she has dated. Dated. I, don't, I mean, I don't think that she's ever confirmed any relationship other than Michael B. Jordan. Right. They might have confirmed her by posting her on their Instagram and stuff like that, but she never confirmed anybody but Michael B. Jordan. That's the only man she ever talked about, except for the soccer player that she was engaged to that she was with for a long time, Memphis. I can't think of his last name, um, but she was engaged at a very, because she's only 21. Right, she's 20, young, I which mean, is like the first or, thing. No, she's 25. She was only, and she was engaged to him when she was, I don't know, 18 or 19. Right, which is another thing. She's young. Mm -hmm. She She's young, and she doesn't want to settle down. It's her choice. I heard from some wise men that men, you know, men don't propose unless they know the answer. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But usually men know the answer mm -hmm. when they propose. So things like this are rare. But then uh, and a lot of people are saying, you know, I think it's just something that people... And I'm just saying, like, a, a lot of society thinks, well, what do you want? Like, a lot of times they really just believe that we are just looking to get married. Like, women need, want to be married, long to be married. That's what is wrong with dating. I'm in this relationship. I'm. I'm seeing if it's going to go somewhere. I'm seeing if it's going to be long-term. And long-term in the rest of my life, long-term in a marital commitment, that's two different things. Right. Two very different things. Right. So I was just taken aback about mm. all of the opinions. I did hear that she, I don't know what it was or whatever, but like she had went on a date with your boo. Yeah. I, I, uh -huh. And then <laughs> uh -huh. also went on a date with your boo's son. Uh-huh. So those are the type of things that feed into that you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. I think that people are um, 
people get people don't people i.e men um don't give women the leeway that they give themselves or that other men give to men women dating is taboo you know you date somebody i'm not dating him anymore you know what i'm saying people be like what happened to ricky you'd be like oh i, I don't date ricky anymore. you'd be like who was that who was ricky remember the guy you'd be like oh yeah remember him Yes, man. Remember that guy. No, I don't see him anymore. You know what I'm saying? If a guy says that, or if a guy is like, I'm dating Sherry, the B, Maya, this, that, and the third, it's like you get a pat on the back. If a woman says that, then automatically they're a hoe. And and and, and it's very unfortunate. And it's just the society that we live in. And women get out of that shit. Date. You know what I'm saying? Michael B. Jordan is in a stage in his life where he wanted something that Lori Harvey didn't want. That's just what it boils down to. It ain't really got nothing to do with no law, love loss. It probably broke up because it's like, well, I want to be married. Well, I don't. Well, ain't no sense in staying together because, you know, it just is what it is. It's unfortunate. You know, relationships don't last. But let that girl live. She's 25 years old. I think that when I seen that she was engaged the first time, I was like, I mean, like, you too. You're getting engaged. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I always joke and say I should have got married when I was in college. I definitely should have got married when I was in college just because you see what's out here now. That was our, that was my best. Yes. It's just a different time, you know, it was before social media. It just was the it was just a better time in life, you know. It was just like a different type of men. I, whatever. We can go that's a, another topic for another day. But in today's time, not even in today's time, just in time, I think women have to find out who they are first. You have to really know who you are, know what you want before you decide to give your life to somebody else and invite somebody in your life that's going to be in your life for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? I I used to tell my nephews all the time, don't settle down with these girls when you're young. You know, get out there, get it out your system, screw, uh, uh, you know, date, do whatever. Do it. Don't, <laughs> don't do. Don't don't be don't be bad to women. You know what I'm saying? But like experience life. That's what I say. Experience life. So then when you do find somebody that you really want to be with, that you know that you don't feel like you're missing out on anything. Maybe Lori Harden felt like she was missing out on something. Maybe Michael B. Jordan was an asshole behind the scenes. Maybe he nice only in front of the camera. Maybe he's, you know, comes from a good family, but you don't like them. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't like the Harveys. You, you know how I feel about Steve Harvey. And I ain't too keen on that damn wife either. You know, <laughs> I don't know these people, but from what right. I know, it's a no for me, you know. So maybe you 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 dodged the bullet. You didn't want to be with him. You motherfucker might have been telling you all your damn life be about money and not about integrity. You know, I mean, it's a it's a number of different ways that you could look at the uh, situation. But I think that both of them got out. I don't want to say got out like it was a waste of time, but I mean, like you, you got out before it was too late. But they dated for a, quite a while. And I mean, I, I'm sure that it was very enjoyable. You know what I'm saying? Now I'll say this. Now I'm going to go back to why I don't like the Harveys because Michael B. Jordan was the best thing since sliced bread. He was this and he was that and he was all oh, this, that, and the third. Now Steve on the radio is talking about, yeah, I'm going to be like my daughter and get out early and blah, blah, blah. He gets on my nerves. I just wanted to throw that in there. He just gets on my nerves. But I don't know. I think that we should be teaching. I think that should, we should be teaching young women and young men to experience life. Michael B. Jordan, like she might have been it, but it's going to be somebody else that's it. You know what I mean? Yes, and I, I don't know the ins and outs, but I truly hope that this doesn't scar him. Yeah. That, he was hurt at that game. I ain't gonna lie. That, that man. I hope that he doesn't pay this forward to another right. woman. I hope that they both take the time that they need to heal mm -hmm. from whatever. Right. And 
I, I hope to continue to see good things from him. Yeah, and her. I mean, hopefully, you know, she moves on. I mean, you know, not like necessarily moves on with another man, but she goes forth in her life and she does great things as well. And I, 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 I just, I really don't like the times that we live in where just people have so much opinion. Like, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having an opinion. I mean, you're a celebrity, you put yourself out there in the public eye. Of course, people are going to have opinions. But all of these scenarios that people are coming up or calling this girl a hoe and, you know, or calling him, we don't know Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan could have been whipping her ass. Exactly. I don't think he was, but he could have been. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he, it could have been anything. Like let people live their life and grieve their relationship in peace. But she well, was. Dating. They don't do that anymore. We have social media now. It's just she was dating. I mean, I ain't going. I'm not saying she a hoe or anything, but she was allegedly dating. Diddy's son, and then allegedly dating him. I mean, that was extreme, but I mean, she's just a regular old Lajuan out here. Or but, a um, old Marjorie Harvey, who has children by exactly. She, she's the goat. She's the goat. But I hope it's not like that. Me either, but she she does have children by brothers. I know. Yeah, one went to jail, and then the other one was free, and then she had a baby by him and got married or was with him in a long-term relationship. She had to keep that going, sweetie. She's the goat. Hence, she's the... She's the best that ever did it. I mean, yeah, and I mean, like, if you go and bring somebody into your life who got some past baggage, because uh, Steve Harvey has some past baggage himself... She came into his life, though, and flipped that life upside down and made him into the money man and not the integrity man. That's neither here nor there. What I'm saying is, is like, you know, Lisa, you're going to bring somebody into your life. Let them be able to add something into your life. And maybe um, maybe Lori Harvey didn't have anything to add into Michael B. Jordan's life. Maybe. I don't know, but I knew you would know. <laughs> I, I knew you would know. And I was like, I haven't heard any of these things. I'm clearly, you know, my connections are lost. What is going on? <laughs> I knew you would know. Uh, and have so much to say about it. Yes. <laughs> that, absolutely. Well, but those the only other, there was, was their only thing. Those were the two things heard. because we have not discussed those things and I'll, and this is how it usually is because you always know. And then, you know, I know a little bit and then you add more and I may see another video or two, but I'm not delving into it because I'm yeah. really not that interested. But I do like some things catch my eye. Yeah. You know, it was something to catch. But I had to I had to dive deep into the Monique and DL situation just because. We're, you know, it's like Tyra Banks said on America's Next Top Model. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. It's like, right. come on, girl. I mean, how much? I mean, I don't have nothing else to give you, you know. And then the Lori Harvey and the Michael B. Jordan. You can't help but the, you can't run away from that. That's damn near. That's that got more traction than the damn uh, people right. that passed away in Buffalo. It's coming up um, a lot of places, and then you know. The men are saying one thing, women are saying another thing. And, you know, you can even see the generations, how they yes. differ in their opinions and stuff like that. And then the older generation is interested. And I'm like, well, that's interesting in itself. But OK, <laughs> people because people really like Michael B. Jordan. But I want to go before we move on. I want to go back to something that you said. You said that people have this idea about women that they only want to just be married. Like that is yeah. our, that is our end goal, you know? And, and it's like, it's not, it is not. There are a true. lot of women out there that are thriving without relationship. And that's not saying that they don't want relationship because everybody wants some companionship. But I mean, I take myself, for example, getting married has never been on my short list of things to do. I think that it's wonderful. And I always say I should have got married in college. I'm, I say that much like I say I'm going to get plastic surgery. But 
I think that if it happens, it's a wonderful thing, but it's never been my, like, I didn't think about it when I was a kid. Like I, when I was young, right. I didn't think about the white picket fence and the man on the horse and coming to save me. And it was going to be this great thing. I mean, honestly, I thought about like power suits and briefcases and high rise still in the floor windows and traveling all over the world and living out of a suitcase and um, definitely having integrity while I do it. But wanting to have money and you know just like living this right. fabulous like adore me with the beautiful things life you know what i'm saying that's what i thought about and i think that there are a lot of women out there that think about that how about you when you was a kid did you think about that never i never i was always a nurturer mm -hmm. caregiver like to help people but i never Imagine my wedding day, uh, nothing like that. I thought of life as, I didn't really feel like the power suits and, but I did see a life of travel and like living on a whim. Mm -hmm. When you were Sagittarius. You Almost know. like a, the word gypsy comes to mind, but like on a higher level. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, never letting the grass grow under my feet. Just whoop, whoop, whoop. And that's why I never wanted children. Mm -hmm. I never wanted children. I didn't want my life to be tied to one place or one thing. And you have to offer children stability. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there are some things that you have to do when you have children, or it's the right thing to do in my eyes, yeah. being a parent. So, Yes, nothing, never. Yeah, and I always never. thought that I, I thought always thought that a man would be in my life. Like, I mean, I love men, and you know, like I always thought that a companion would be in my life. I just never thought that I was going to be like Susie Homemaker. And it's so funny because, like, I'm Susie Homemaker, like in my life by myself. You know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm very Susie right. Homemaker, or even like with the family and stuff like that. But yeah, no, I just never thought that. And then, like, as a kid, we've seen healthy marriages, and I've seen, yes. and, and it's like, oh, yeah, this is wonderful, you know what I'm saying? But it's just, I don't know, it just wasn't on my, like, list of things. And I, I often wonder, like, is that why I'm not married now? Because it's not, like, I don't put effort into it like I, I mean i do put effort into a man That's when true. i have one but i'm saying when i what i say that is is that like some women they want to be married and they that's what they that's what it is it's like you know this is the focus i want this and i'm going after this while that's not my focus so i don't necessarily go after it you know what i mean like if it comes i think it's a wonderful thing but it's not something that i'm like ultra focus on and nothing else matters um i agree at church they asked me some years ago to uh, create and run a singles ministry mm -hmm. and i was i was i don't know <laughs> i'm not doing they were like why not we need you know things to do you're young first of all i'm not living my life focusing on the fact that i'm single right i'm busy <laughs> right <laughs> i have things to do right. i don't like what does it what is that what is a singles like you want me to create meet and greets i don't what is that i don't i don't know what that is i don't so no that's not for me i'm not i'm not going to do that that's one thing that was profound i don't focus my life on being single you a smarty art yeah i'm busy i don't yeah so the other thing is when i was married i was married at, we didn't have a wedding mm -hmm. we went we got married we came back home finished doing what we were doing <laughs> I don't, I like to help people. I don't necessarily like being the center of attention. Mm. Um, so, and I think some things are personal. I'll tell you about it later, mm -hmm. but it's personal to mm. me. And the third thing is what I always felt marriage was, is a partnership. Yes. Which so is your thing. The man for me is a man that has a dream or a goal. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of men, I know a lot of men with dreams and goals, vision, and I think that's wonderful, but they're so hell bent on getting it done that they don't make room for a relationship. Mm -hmm. 
my opinion, what they don't realize is men don't birth things. Mm. Men don't give birth. So to be complete and successful and stress-free and the, you know, the right way is to have a woman mm -hmm. by your side. Now, it could be a sister, a mom, a friend, you know, but to me, that's what marriage is. Marriage mm. is purposeful. Yep. It's purposeful. I love romance. That's cute. Not a whole lot of it because sometimes it's a little <laughs> borderline little fairy. I, I don't like that. You know what I mean? But it's purposeful. Yeah. So what is our purpose? What are we building? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm attracted to. That's what gets me excited in the rap. Like, oh, come on, we're gonna do this. That's mm -hmm. what keeps me excited in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I the things that I you can buy me more things. You can take me more places. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it's about a purpose. What is the purpose? Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I thought that that was really interesting how people were thinking, well, she lucky he proposed. Right. And I'm like, and like, she's young. like, it's such a like it's such a even if she was old at the end of the day, if she was old. It's not the it's not the ultimate prize. Exactly. It, it, when you, you know, I often think like I I think a lot like you as well, right? I also think that in a relationship of any kind, especially a marriage, you have to really like the person that you're with. You have to be yeah. like minded, and you have to like the person that you're with. Love comes and goes, ebbs and flows. You know, it's yes. like what what do we have outside of that? What is right. the legacy that we're leaving? What is the the purpose that we have? in being together you know like they say in the bible it's a help me it really is it's a help me if you don't have somebody that's going to come into your life and be helpful why invite somebody into your life also i mean if she like i said if she was old it's not the ultimate prize the ultimate prize is for you to be peace at peace with yourself and yeah. be happy with yourself it really is nobody else can make you happy you have to make yourself happy if the girl wasn't happy in the situation, I mean, what, what, what did it matter? Because it had to be something else going on, not to go all deep into it, but it had to be something else going on for the girl to say, no, I don't know. It just was, it just don't seem like it's like, oh, I'm 25 and you, I don't want to get married. And so the deuces, I don't know, just, I don't know. But um, whatever it is, I really respect the sanctity of marriage and yeah. I respect the fact that she didn't enter into it knowing that she was on the fence and all that other kind of stuff exactly. I, re I respect that exactly. i think it's great yeah yep so yeah i mean i gotta get you on the podcast and talk about stuff that we talk about all the time but okay well i mean it's good to hear it for other people to hear our thoughts as well <laughs> okay <laughs> You know, I'll be, I, I'm going to be more um, active in bringing things to you, like I like I always do. So that I appreciate it. Don't, don't keep me in the dark. You know <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> no, we're going to keep you in the light. Um, right. You know I don't know what's going on. You have to keep me in the light. I, I need to see. We'll make sure that we keep you in the light. But yeah. um, I think that this was a great conversation. Yeah, so now it's far spent. So we'll get into the topic the next time. Yeah, uh, you know, just know that we might not be here for a week because my beautiful co-host, you know, if you're listening to the sound of my voice, this is Maya and my beautiful co-host, the D, is going to be on a beach luxuriating somewhere. And so we probably uh, won't be here next week and also another announcement that we have is as we stated in the top of the show we are busy Very. Um, and because of our busy schedule and some things that we just have coming up that's already been on the calendar for a while we just want to make the announcement that we probably won't be putting out a show on monday i think that the shows are going to be out when they out until further notice right. so we're going to get a show to you every week except for next week but <laughs> we, but it might not come out on mondays just because 
we're yeah. we're busy and we really have to adjust our recording time because my schedule did change yeah okay. and I, I think that we want to make sure that we get things out but we can't we we can't always promise that you know for the a little bit of the future we don't know when that they're going to come out on monday um, we want to make sure that we drop something, but it just might not be on Mondays. And we just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Mine is so. nice. He's so <laughs> thorough. Yeah. So, so integrity. Not, it, it, it's, it's all about <laughs> that, honey. I'll take that any day over a dollar. That's for yes. sure. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for this week. We hope that you enjoyed uh, the episode. Remember, we'll be here. You just might not get an episode on Monday. But also remember, you can check us out anywhere where you can listen to a podcast. We're on all Audible sites. Also, follow us on social media, as we always say. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at We Did That Shit. Follow me on my personal Twitter. It's MyMy13. That's M-Y-M-Y-1-3. And I'm at the Amina. It's B-I-B-B-I-A-M-I-N-A. Yep, so we'll see you guys when we see you. <laughs> I love you, Maya. I was going to say, I mean, what is going <laughs> on with you? I mean, what happened to the I love you, Maya? I love you, Maya. You know what I was thinking? I was, me again. I was thinking, what do I say at the end? But it's, <laughs> I was thinking, remember, be great this week. Do that shit. And then I say, I love you, Maya, because I do. I love you, too. Dang. The <laughs> one week where I was really going to be like, I love you, too, boo. <laughs> you can't even give me that. I love you, Maya. But I love you, too. I love you, Maya. <laughs>